so welcome back to another video um, I hope you all enjoyed the last few videos I've done um, hopefully the van shit video should be out now let me know what you thought of that um, I'm gonna get straight into it and show you straight away what we're doing so we've got this <coughs> main hub that's got a ABS fault and the exciter rings knackered inside the torch isn't very bright on not very much inside there rate hidden um, so I've been cracking on with this I've got the caliper off there's quite a bit of rim in here which is quite nice the chamber's out of the way caliper's off there were 27mm nuts bolts 27mm bolts just cracking the half shaft out now they're 22mm so we're going to pull that out we're going to get that hub nut off and then we'll have a look to see what it looks like and see if it's accessible or we may have to split the disc I'm hoping not but we'll see how we get on so I hope you enjoy the video and um, let's, uh, let's get the after shaft out and have a look so what we need to do now is whip this hub nut off I don't know how tight it is we we'll wait for a torque setting but she was going to be tight remember to knock that tab over because if it catches the, the threads on the axle you will F it up so let's uh, see how tight this nut is I'll put you here so you can see now if it comes straight off I'll be shot can I love nut comes off No. Right. There we have it. I'm surprised though, because I've got a bar so on it, welded on it, so you lose a bit of you lose some torque out of that. In there, if we can try and lever it up and knock the cold exciter ring out. So, old one's out, got a new one here. I'm gonna knock in, it's not in by the way, but yeah, I've got that in now. Put our clip in and then we should be all good. So that's the hub back on. Um, we just need to torque this hub nut up. Um, yeah, and just find torque settings for that torque nut up. It's heavy. You can get that back on, you have to get it so dead straight, otherwise, it just won't go on. So we're there, we've got it on, um, and just need to torque it up now. So, next job is a compressor on an absolute weapon of a vehicle i'm going to quickly show you it very very quickly so there it is let's give me a torch on there it is hidden in the depths of this thing here uh, i've got the first corn pipe out it's drained out main air pipe out top and then we're gonna get the back ones out which look an absolute shit job so Let's start cracking through. I'm going to time that bits and then we'll see how we get on. So here's where I'm at with it. Um, we've got the first pipe off here. Obviously, we've got the second pipe off the back. I need to get the compressor pipe off now, but I needed to get that union out of the way. It was situated here, um, just so I can get onto 
big compressor part there so we're going to get that off 32 mil try and do that and then start taking out the mounting bolts off the compressor so it's all good fun um, it's actually not good fun it's actually a pain in the ass so yeah let's uh, try and get this pipe off so i've been told the compressor pipe at the back is a bit of a pain it's about here on the vehicle so i've got to take these back seats out to gain access to it which i didn't know so i've been struggling for the last 10 15 minutes so yeah uh, if you don't know you don't know i guess um i'm gonna try and get these back seats out and there's a panel apparently behind we can get access to so let's get these back seats out and have a look right so we're in we should be able to gain access to it now there's our compressor pipe just there and get to that you know, we might have to get some of these clamps out of the way and get the pipes sort of moved a little bit but we have a lot better access than what we did trying to get it from the back Right, so what I've managed to do is, I've cable tied this big pipe out of the way here, and this pipe here, which I think goes to off the turbo shed, so the inner cooler is out of the way enough, and we can gain access. Uh, I've cracked it a little bit, yeah, it's moving, but the obviously the union's moving at the same time, so it's a, it's a pain in the backside. But we will get there. Uh, hopefully we should have a bit more access now, so let's uh, see if we can get this pipe off so we need to get this tandem pump out here which is basically a power steering pump um, got this pipe off here, the bottom bolts off there but there's a union there it's just got a bolt behind it so we might have to take a union out not sure yet but we need to get out of the way to get to the compressor so it's just taking loads off to get to one bit but let's get right so Got that from there. That to use a big bar, I think, because I think it's going to be tight. Oh no. They're going to be tight. Proper tight. Can't get that extension on there. Two seconds. Last one. Let's uh, get the second one out. So we're pretty much out. So there's the compressor out. For anyone that don't know about the compressor, it has a coolant 
in and out to keep it cool. So I've got my like a head gasket here. It's a port out and then a port in. So when you start it up and you build the air up, the gears inside will spin in there. And there's like a little piston inside that will jump up and down like an engine. And a lot of pressure will build up after going up and down for so long, build up and then distribute the air out around the air dryer. So just a little tip, because this is in awkward position, you obviously have to have the gear in line with the flywheel. If you come down here on the crank, turn the crank, which then will turn the crank shaft and then turn the flywheel inside, and you can get lined up and you can push in. So I'm all bolted up, all nutted in, nutted in, God, all nuts in and everything like that. So it's now about getting all the pipes on, get the tandem pump out, steering pump back in, and all that, and get the pipes back in on top. So. I think the hardest bit done now is all click and play now, so let's get all the pipes in and uh, get this running up. Okay, so there's our compressor pipe on there. So let's see. There's our compressor pipe on. There's the coolant pipe on. Uh, so we've got to get the top one on here. But everything this side is tight and done. We just need to get these pipes all back in line, so I'm going to turn up this bit and get all these parts back in so a little update we've got this tandem pump back on that's all back on, piped up, piped up at the bottom, piped up at the top. Just that part to get on top there of the compressor. And we've got the oil reservoir to put on here. So yeah, we made good progress here. Last little bits now. Um, I try and time that now as much as I can. So that's it built back up, compressor's all on, once a bit of a brake clean up, clean over but we're on, we're topped up with fluid, just cool it now, and then we're going to go for a start up. Right, let's start them up.
now this is a video that I promised I was going to get done for last weekend but I didn't have a chance because well I was driving it back and I was busy and all that sort of stuff so I'm going to go through what I've bought um, so I'm going to cut straight to the point this is my 2000 Uh, 2012 1.6 diesel um, it's had a few little bits done to it which we'll go through in a minute but uh, first I'm going to show you about the paint now the paint is um, been respraying it's called Omnix white uh, pearl white which is a Volkswagen colour if you look at the TIG ones and all that stuff in that pearl white that's exactly the same colour as this has been so the front bumper I've got to replace the brackets on because it doesn't quite sit properly but that is a Mark 7 Golf front bumper shame they didn't make these as standard on these um, but yeah obviously re-sprayed white and then roof wrapped in like a, a black so we've got some custom mirrors I don't know what for I think off a Golf I'm not sure um, obviously the side skirts on here um, it is on coilovers so and the spring has been turned around at the back so it is low but over a normal speed bump it's fine but obviously if you get sleeping policeman ones you could have to go over the middle of them because you're gonna have a problem scraping and whatever um, so if, if I put my box in the back it will drop it down so I'll just put my box in the middle and um, so it should be alright it sits at a nice level and uh, I really think it suits any caddy like that looks good that low so it's got a custom rear bumper as well, very similar to the R32 Golf, if you've ever seen them. We'll have the exhaust done at some point, but it's not really a necessity. Uh, reversing camera, and yeah, there's sort of, these are ABT alloys, they were originally grey, now like a bronzy gold colour, I think they really suit it well, especially with the paint. Um, yeah, it just sets it off really nice, and yeah. I'm um, very, very happy with it. It's uh, The thing is with it, people are going to say, oh, you can't work out of something like that, but yeah, I can. And for me, when I'm only just getting started, I don't want anything too big. Some people will buy a van to stand up. I buy a van that will stand out. The van will stand out. I'll get some YouTube on the side and some bits and bobs on it, and it will stand out because I think, personally, it's a nice looking van. So that's my marketing thing, with, if you want to call it, um, a van that stands out. So inside is pretty standard little bits and bobs. So we've got a Mark 5 Golf GTI front seats. They are very comfortable, very comfy for a long journey as well. Uh, and the armrest as well. We've got a Mark 5 Golf GTI gear selector, gear stick you want to call it, and then radio inside. Um, everything that, other than that, obviously just the speakers, everything else is pretty standard inside for a van. So, have I got any plans for it? Yes, a few little bits. The front bumper, we're going to sort these brackets out here. We're going to get some GTD, I think, brackets to fit that. Um, I'm eventually, on, hopefully by the end of the year, going to put it on air, because air will allow me to, outside the house, drop it down. Ain't got to worry about security so much, and then obviously when you drive normally, we'll lift it up to a normal ride height, uh, which is going to help. And then obviously it'll stand out as well. So, yeah, I hope you, you guys like it. Um, we're uh, hoping to progress forward, get my own work and everything like that and hopefully this van is going to set me out and get me going on what I need to do and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys around. Um, I will be doing Truck Fest this year in it, hopefully in it. Uh, it will be there no matter what, whether it will be uh, on 
a sort of display or whether it will be just passing the car back. I'm not sure yet, but we'll be there. We'll, we're going to that one, Red's one at North as well, so we're going to be doing a few this year and then obviously we'll get some and then get some stickers on the back here, probably this YouTube channel here and then obviously what I decided to call business wise and everything like that, but yeah. Like I said, only a 1600 diesel, um, it's about 105 horsepower, nothing major, but I've done from down south up north, I've done filled it up 30 quid, half a tank, and that's got me up there and right down to work all week, so it's done very well on fuel. Um, insurance is 400 pounds a year cheaper than what I was paying on my Volvo car that I had, so all round very, very good. Um, Good sets of tyres on it. It's had cam belt done. Uh, it's not long been MOT. Service has all been done, so it's very well maintained. And now I've got a vehicle here that's gonna sort of do me for what I need for now and get going. And like I say, obviously it stands out as well, which is good. So yeah.